On the heels of signing a major offtake agreement for the sale of a minimum of 20,000 tons of copper oxide ore and now securing a hydrometallurgical plant for producing a finished product, I'm joined with CEO Russell Fryer to talk about the significant developments for critical metals. My good sir, welcome. Thank you, Brandon, for having me. And thank you for coming on. Well, let's just dive right into it. This is an absolutely significant offtake agreement for your company. Can you describe what you've been able to obtain for your shareholders? So... The offtake discussion started in June of this year, and we were close to signing an offtake agreement. And before we knew it, we had uh, five other interested parties come and visit Malulu Mine and say they wanted our production. We started production the third week of January 2023, and then we worked through the rain season to get to having a run of mine stockpile of about 9,000 tons in June of 2023. And the buyers came out and they said, we like what you're producing. We like the quality. We all wish to purchase it. Um, and we went through June, July, August, and even September uh, negotiating with all six. And at the last month, a seventh buyer came who had fantastic payables, uh, were helping with the transportation, and uh, came out and gave us the best terms. But in the meanwhile, <clears throat> we had been negotiating to purchase a uh, copper cobalt cobalt hydroxide processing plant because we wanted to capture the full value chain of what we produce. And so the key was to be able to find the right buyer that would take a short-term supply contract for our ore and be able to uh, extinguish that at the appropriate time so we could feed our own Malulu ore into our own plot. And so it was, it was a bit tricky. Negotiations were um, often to and fro at two, three in the morning. But we managed to find the right buyer for the Malula ore in the short term who will take everything that we can produce until we have to start feeding the plant that we announced today. Yeah, fantastic. And I appreciate you going into detail there. I'd like to go into a little bit more detail on that plant. Uh, you just announced that, and it's less than 100 kilometers away from your uh, Malulu project as well. How will this rental and proposed acquisition further increase shareholder value? So the plant has a steady state capacity of uh, 12,000 ton per month of, of ore feedstock. And out of that, it can produce about 400 tons of copper cathode and 200 tons of cobalt hydroxide. So if you just take roughly a spot mark, uh, spot prices today on LME, cobalt being 33,000, uh, co uh, copper cathode being about 8,000, that is just over $5 million in revenue per month um, uh, that we would get from owning this plant and even renting the plant. And the margins are roughly 20% or so. So you can see our net profits would be roughly about $12 million. Um, and if you add the net profits from Malulu, would be close to $20 million in EBITDA um, come December 2024. Yeah. And and just for anybody who's watching this, who may not be looking, may not have seen your company before in the past, go look at the market cap of your company and then come back to this point and just listen to everything you just said there. It really, really is interesting because now you're able to not only uh, find a buyer for all of your product, but the processing plant, and it's very, very close as well. Look what it's been able to do for your company. And it's really uh, revolutionized it, to be honest. Well, the idea now is to optimize it. So I'm, I've called in uh, three process engineers, an electrical engineer from South Africa to write me up a 113 page report on how to get it past the 400 tons per month of uh, copper cathode and 200 tons of cobalt hydroxide. Now that's obviously a phase three type plan, but the idea is, is to continually grow this so we can actually start producing well over a thousand tons of copper cathode per month and 500 tons of cobalt hydroxide. That would really put us into the mid-tier stage of uh, metals and mining companies, which would obviously put us on the radar of, of the bigger companies that are looking to enter the Congo and actually looking to enter the region uh, itself. Yeah, very interesting. I was, I was going to ask, do you have plans of scaling that up? And clearly, you've already answered that. So that's fantastic. Now, the decision is also uh, to become a processor is a big change for your company. Uh, in your words, a transformational change from the core makeup of what your company was before this announcement. What led to this decision and how will you ensure you have the right team to facilitate this new element to critical metals? Well, in one of my previous um, <clears throat> occupations, you know, we had excellent mines, high grade mines, but what wasn't uh, available to us was our own processing plant to process our feedstock. And so I have this saying, he who controls the region uh, will control uh, the mining processing. And that's what's happened now is, is you've seen uh, the likes of the China Mali who own Tenki Fungarumi. You've seen the likes of Glencore who own Matanda, um, all 
big multi-billion dollar market cap companies. You've seen uh, Ivanhoe Resources, or Ivanhoe Mining in this case, out of Canada, come and start to build their own uh, copper cathode plant, even though they're currently producing uh, copper concentrates. So the idea is, if you really want to be a multi-billion dollar company or market caps above a billion, you actually have to control your downstream production and your finished goods. And it makes sense because nobody really wants to pay the transportation costs to uh, transport to Europe or to North America an unfinished good product. You want to capture that full value. So copper cathode will produce at 9995 um, and our cobalt hydroxide would be a 30% cobalt hydroxide, which could be used in the new plant that's going up in Oklahoma. I believe there's another plant that's being earmarked uh, for Canada in cobalt hydroxide uh, production into sulfates. Um, and I believe that there's potentially another plant going up in Europe. So we'll have no shortage of buyers for our cobalt hydroxide to, to uh, sell into these plants for the uh, EV market. Yeah, very well said. I appreciate that. Um, I'd also like to talk about funding because everyone, you know, you, you hear this, it sounds amazing, but obviously there needs to be funding in order to bring it all to fruition. You did touch on this a little bit in the news release. Can you give an overview of how this will all be funded? Well, I am highly sensitive to uh, dilution and shareholder dilutions. I mean, the shareholders are really my business partners. And we had a saying in the hedge fund world, dilution is not the solution. And so what's happened is, is I look at our shares in issue, uh, much like a Bitcoin, where there's a finite amount, and I don't want to dilute that. So the key of the key for not diluting shareholders is having some type of cash flow, and then going to a finance institution and saying, "You've seen our cash flow. You've seen that we have real assets in the balance sheet. Let's do some type of debt pro, uh, debt uh, facility." So we've had three, four uh, financial institutions global uh, that are interested in what we're doing. Two of them are African focused only, which is great because they have to lend capital into African companies. And now that we have cash flow, uh, you know it's much more palatable to them. Um, our fourth potential funding uh, would come from the U.S. government. Now, what the market is doesn't know yet um, is that we've actually set up Critical Metals USA out of Greenwich, Connecticut, uh, to tap into some of the Title III uh, capital that's available here into in the U.S. But also the DFC, a U.S. institution, is actively looking to invest via loans or equity into African companies like ourselves. So the answer to your question is, is uh, we are in talks with the U.S. government. We, I hope to be down in the Congo in one or two weeks with two representatives from Washington, D.C., uh, doing due diligence on uh, the plant's infrastructure that we announced today to visit the Mulu mines and one or two other uh interesting opportunities that we have up our sleeve. Um, so I expect that that visit to certainly happen within the end of this month. And then um, what has been announced um, is that we are looking to list on the OTCQX. Application has been put in. Um, people want us to raise capital off the back of that. What I want to do is just introduce Critical Metals PLC to the North American market, Canadians and the U.S. investors, so they have ability to uh, purchase you know, North American listed stock instead of having to go into London. Yeah, very interesting. And again, well said. I appreciate that. Well, you've already answered a little bit of this, but I'll give you some room for anything else that you can think of. Finally, what's next for critical metals? What should investors expect over the coming weeks and months from your company? So um, we, I'm on record saying that we, we were looking for three transactions this year. Uh, we've done one, or we've announced certainly one. So I've got three months to announce a bit more. We're going to expand in the copper cobalt space. Uh, most likely in the Congo. Um, we are uh, interested in the tantalum tungsten niobium space. We've been visiting mines in various countries over the last year and have started due diligence. We've done uh, test work on uh, the diamond drill core that some of these mines have. Um, these mines are operational. So I would hope to have some type of announcement on uh, geo, uh, geo regional expansion here in the, by the year end or so. Uh, certainly an announcement it won't be closed, but um, watch this space. We look to uh, have five operating mines in five different jurisdictions. Um, and so I think our next mineral after copper and cobalt will be uh, tungsten and tantalum, potentially niobium. Very interesting. Well, Russell, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate going into all this detail about what you have been doing and what you plan to do. For anyone looking for more information, you can just go right down to the bottom of this uh, video here. You see the website where you can turn to. Thank you so much for your time, Russell. Thank you, Brendan, for having me.